So here's a demonstration of image generation within Photoshop, Firefly and Lightroom in preparation for the Adobe Summit on Thursday and Friday. Let's start with Lightroom where we'll be using a picture uh, from my photo studio. I'm not necessarily very happy with the background and I'm going to be able to correct it fairly quickly thanks to those AI driven tools such as the background selection tool. You can see the background here in pink and I can now change the brightness by moving the cursors and recover my background entirely. Now I can use this image properly. But I could go even further by selecting people such as the person with the red hat now I can change the brightness so that this person is more visible, for instance. I could apply changes to skin tone, eyes, etc. Many other options are available. That's all well and good, but I'd like to work on new pictures. So I'm going to use Firefly, which is in beta version. And it's available at fireflyadobe.com. You can place a registration request if you so wish. Let's use Firefly now to generate an image from scratch. Image generators are all over the place, but Firefly works off Adobe's database, therefore solving the copyright issue, hopefully. We'll get uh, it in our Creative Cloud subscription soon. Let's move forward with this picture from Firefly and give the tool indications that the picture is OK with us to improve future recognition and I'm going to open this image generated by Firefly directly in Photoshop Beta. This once more is a beta version. So now I can see something worthy of note. In the bottom left hand corner you can see the Adobe watermark which states that the image has been generated by Adobe Firefly and I find this is useful disclosure. It's meant to avoid misleading people. Today we're not allowed to use it as long as it's in beta version there. Now let's uh, select parts of the illustration. For example, I want to turn the garment into green. It also changed the shape of the garment, by the way. I'm only going to make an attempt here on the other garment and press the generate button. I've shortened the processing times a little, just so you know. Even let the prompt sink in for a while, and that, there you have it. So now I'm going to choose from several options. I'm going to choose the one I like best. Now let's move on to another example. Let's choose an image that I can process in Photoshop. But what's more interesting is Photoshop with Firefly inside. So here I'm going to load an image of a cathedral that I need to clean up. And as you can see, there's a lot of clutter in front of the cathedral which is very annoying. So I select a motor car to start with. Let's change the color of this car and make it red. Now I can see it more clearly and make it stand out. Sometimes you have to make several attempts to succeed. I don't really like it. I'm going to select the bottom part of the footer. It's getting more and more interesting and I'm going to be able to place a request to remove all the clutter in front of the cathedral, the people, the cars and everything else to recover a much cleaner image of my cathedral with trees instead of cars and it's much more peaceful, less cluttered, less polluted as well. Not quite like the real thing, more like the cities that like to see it. Let's get rid of these posts now. Photoshop can let you do that manually but here we'll do it automatically by ordering Photoshop to delete these posts. How will it look? It's much better now and I can do it all in one go. Let's remove them. Oh, the result is absolutely fantastic. That's not all though. I'm going to select the trees in the foreground and I'm going to decide to turn them into autumn trees. Let's make it red. So we're going to regenerate the image. See the bottom right hand side. In fact, every time I do something, I get a different layer and mask. 
very convenient. So I want to get rid of these layers. All I have to do is merge them. So here I am with my red tree. But I've got people up in front and I don't want them. It's a bit of an AI hallucination. So I'm going to tell it to take those people off. Here they go. In the foreground, it's time to regenerate my image. It's done. It's rid me of the unwanted people. Now I'm going to go left and change the color of the tree. In fact, it will probably change the size too. We'll see because it's not a search engine. AI is somewhat unpredictable. Let's regenerate that photo. And cross our fingers. The good thing is that with Photoshop, I'll be able to control the changes to this image. It's not just an image that goes crazy, that does anything. Now, the picture is quite clean. Well, I have designed the ideal cathedral with an autumn foreground. And then we're going to add more people here in front of the building. Here we are. People are arriving and we are going to see. Let's let the AI crunch the data. Here they come. Now my picture is exactly how I wanted it. I'm ready to publish this on my blog when I'm allowed to do it after the software has been officially released. More than just uh, a demonstration. In conclusion, what we can say of this is that it's more than just a demonstration of Photoshop's features. I think we can draw a number of conclusions about content factories and content production within businesses. Firstly, we're no longer limited to stock photos. That doesn't mean we won't use them anymore. It means we can use them and take them to the next step. In other words, today we're limited to stock photos as they are. There's no issue with that. That's what they were made for. But stock photos may sometimes look the same. Now we can go beyond that. We can use the best stock photos and turn them into what we want, adding personal things to them, including our branding, for instance, and all this copyright control. Since with Firefly, when it becomes available officially, we will be using the Adobe stock to produce our images. That's very different from other AI generation tools. With this, we'll also design better illustrations for our blogs, Often illustrating blogs is hard. One needs very specific images. There are very few and far between. Stock images and above all the ones that stand out and are specific enough aren't easy to find. Similarly, this combination of different Adobe tools is far more powerful than standard standalone AI generation tools. Here you can tweak the final result. You're in control. This combination of tools is a killer app. And you don't have to spend hours tweaking your prompts or doing wonky remixes, which are very difficult to handle. You're totally in charge. These AI tools do hallucinate to use the AI lingo. They are designed to hallucinate and content factories cannot make do with that. They need to correct and control their pictures. Here we can mix and match tools and resources and manually correct the pictures if needs be. A lot of content factories will be able to use such tools to craft better images for their content and faster. The content production process would be sped up and improved and the pictures thus produced would be your own. As long as you use this tool responsibly, of course, you're in charge, not the machine. Hence the importance of working from a database that is clean. I mean, clean from a copyright point of view. And last but not least, I don't think these tools will make photo savvy people disappear. On the contrary, in my opinion, it's exactly the opposite. On the contrary, we're going to need people who are more and more photo experts to be part of these content factories. 
Here I've shown only a few basic features. There are many more and mastering them is tricky. You will need that knowledge, a mix of photo and art, and technical skills to mix images from all kinds of sources. Images from corporate databases, images which you will then share with all your co-workers, with the rest of the company, and at the same time, this allows a great degree of creativity. This is great for blogs and also for social media. Besides, these tools are compliant with copyright and disclosure guidelines. The watermark is great. And it is great one doesn't have to add it manually. In my opinion, this is only the beginning of something new. Content production will change. And we've seen nothing yet. Lastly, let's repeat. You should use these tools responsibly. Marketers are in charge, not AI.